Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Long Meadow Church of the Brethren. Welcome to you here, and welcome to you on the other side of the screen for a very special Sunday when we welcome Brother Charles Nayani. In Matthew 28, the Great Commission. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go, and when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. I think it was in 1988 that uh, we became connected to Charles. And we're going to hear today about someone who answered that commission. He has built from nothing orphanages and Bible schools and hospitals and teaching schools and made pastors and built up in Ghana, West Africa, a place where the word is growing and alive. And so please join with me in prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask that you strengthen him. That as he comes forward to talk to us today, that you quiet what is going on with his throat and give him strength and power. We greedily want to hear the blessings and work being done through this powerful man of Christ. And so watch over and keep us and let us use this time to draw ourselves closer to you, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ. And all of his children said, Amen. And so without further ado, now, I, you gave this to me. You want to yell at him, you yell at him. Come here, brother. opportunity and the church long meadow church of the brethren for many years of standing together in the ministry in Ghana West Africa I'm sorry I lost my voice about three days ago I'm trying to find it. It's somewhere. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I want to thank Pastor Paul, his dear wife, Wendy. The two boys, they are not boys anymore, they are men. The leadership of this church and the family of God for standing with us in Africa. Indeed, this church raised a lot of money in the building of the orphanage. Hallelujah. And I thank you for all the years about 36 years ago when we got connected. Amen. <coughs> <coughs> I'm sorry. But God is good. God is good. Great. All the time. God is good. All the time. And hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
You say amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Then you say hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good. We're going to have an African service. It takes me an hour to wind up. And an hour to preach. You're going to be here for a long time. Pastor Paul, I want to come back. When? Tomorrow? <laughs> next Sunday? Anytime. Amen. Amen. So, I was raised in a single family home. And during the time of growing up in the village, I had desired to be a marine electrical engineer so I can work in ships and travel across the world and get a lot of mula, mula, mula. <laughs> so whilst I was in college, I felt the call of God of my life. So I packed all my books and I returned to the village. And my mama looked at me and said, why are you here, son? You're supposed to be in school. I said, Mom, I think God will have me to be a preacher. She looks at me and said, not in this home. Well, we don't have all the systems you have here. So you try to push your child, child through some education so he can get a job. So that when you're older, your child takes care of you till it goes to glory. So she realized that being a preacher, I'm not going to earn a lot of money. So he was not too happy about it. But as time went on, he was okay with it. And we began to preach the gospel. In my village at that time, there was no electricity, no running water. So many shrines across the village. People were worshiping idols and trees and rivers and sacrificing animals and stuff. And God was using us in a mighty way as we began to teach the word and preach in marketplaces, street corners, praying all night over the village. And very soon, those who were worshiping idols, they were turning their life to Christ. And we see the hand of God touching people. And it came to a point in my life, I was having difficulty taking care of myself. But I had no income. At the time, we were writing to Billy Graham. He was sending us tapes, cassette. He was sending us pamphlets and tracts and booklets about discipleship evangelism. And we're using all his tracts that he sent to us. But as we were doing that, I was thinking of maybe moving from the village and go to a city and get a job so I can take care of myself. And one day, I was walking down the road on the street, and I found an envelope on the street, so I picked it up. And the address on the envelope was Bible Fellowship Missionary Society of Canada. So I wrote a letter to them describing what I'm involved in in the village. And they had a Bible college there and then also had a correspondence school. So the lady who was in charge of the correspondence school, he just passed last year to glory. Sent me a, a preaching tape. And the title of the sermon was, God isn't finished yet. And as I was listening to that message, he reached a point in his message and said, Young man, why is it in the pool of despair? Rise up and build. God isn't finished yet. Indeed, that was the message that rang in my heart and my mind. So I said to myself, no, if I move to the city, 
I may probably not be in ministry, so I'll continue in this village. And very soon, Billy Graham wrote to me and said, we are having a, a conference for itinerant evangelists all over the world. 8,000 evangelists that were invited. And I got picked to go. Indeed, at the time, he paid for my plane ticket. He paid for my hotel bills, my food, transportation, everything. The Billy Graham Association paid for everything. Hallelujah. Isn't God good? Indeed, I left Ghana with $10. I came back with my $10. I didn't have to use it. <laughs> oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. And so whilst I was there, I was almost every day, I would see this man and I would sit with him. Pastor Richard Green of Frostburg, Maryland. God's Ark of Safety. And then we became friends and we began to write to each other. And two years after that, in 1988, the conference was 1986, and in 1988 he came to Ghana. He brought missionaries from the U.S. and one person from England. And we had the first ever crusade in the village. We had to rent generators for where they will live and stay, and also for the crusade, the seminars and everything. But God really moved in a mighty way. People gave their heart to the Lord Jesus. And we thank God for what he has done. Indeed, whilst they were there, I received a letter from the college that they have given me past scholarship and I need to come with the rest of the money. So whilst Pastor Green was there, I showed him the letter. He said, well, Charles, I'm also a preacher. I don't have a lot of money, but I have a lot of friends. I will share with them and see what we can come up with. Praise the name of the Lord. And so he got people together and they raised the money for me to go to Canada to be trained in the Bible College. And those who supported me, some are here. The Bakers, Jim Chip, Pastor Joe Questenberry, the churches here, Pastor Marwin, they all helped me, who is going home to be with the Lord. It's not only they all got together and helped. Hallelujah. Isn't God good? Amen. And over the years, this church here has been a great blessing to the work that we are doing in Ghana, West Africa. And I want to thank you from the depths of our hearts. Thank you for standing with us together in reaching the lost with the gospel of the kingdom and bringing people to the knowledge of Christ. Hallelujah. God is good. All the time. God is good. No, you have to be with me now. God is good. All the time. You don't listen very well. Amen. So we are grateful to you, church, for standing with us over the years, 36 years as a not a small thing. It's a long time of relationship, confidence, and trust. I write to Pastor Paul here all the time. We communicate. I watch the videos online and all that. And it's been a real blessing. And I want to thank you for standing with us over the years. Hallelujah. And then the boys, when I came, the boys were young. Uh, they are big. I don't call them boys anymore. They are men. <laughs> Hallelujah. Our God is good. So going back to Ghana, I remember when I finished my master's program and I was going back to Ghana, my dean of the seminary, Trinity Western University, he came to me and said, Charles, the church that you used to go and minister there, they want to be. They want you to be their pastor, and they had a parsonage and everything, so they would take care of you. I looked to him and I said, "I'm really honored to be considered for this position." 
But you know, God, my heart is in Ghana. God has a mission for me in Africa. And I thank God that I obey the voice of the Lord. And you being with us, we are able to achieve so many things to the glory of God. As I say today, we planted 30 churches. You say 30. In our language and in our, the way we pronounce things, we say 30. 30. <laughs> 30. Amen. 30 churches. We have two churches in Ivory Coast. Two churches in Ivory Coast is also coming on board because we've gone there and established a cell group that we wanted to be stronger and we do a crusade and launch the church there. Hallelujah. God is good all the time. Hallelujah. Indeed, in night, we have also have a school from grade one to nine. We have about 300 children in the school. And in 1994, a team from this church and Frostberg came to Ghana, of which that is John Mowen, that is not only who's gone home to be with the Lord, and James Ship were part of the team. And we started the construction of the first building ever on the land. Hallelujah. And that has been the classroom block for the school. Apart from the school, we also have an orphanage that we cater for needy children, abandoned and orphaned children. Indeed, the premise of the orphanage was that in my tribe, it is not practiced anymore, but in my tribe, there used to be the 10 child is considered a curse. You know, Africa is a polygamous society. People have two wives and three wives. Yeah, and because of that, they have many children. I know of a family that have 20 children, three wives. Amen. Pastor well, Paul, what will you do when somebody comes to your church and he has three wives? I will feel bad for him. <laughs> I don't even know. Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> Amen. process of birth. So the orphanage was built with, that, with this premise. And thank God now the practice has been abolished and that the orphanage is still catering for needy children, orphan children, abandoned children. And we thank God they have a, it's on the same site. Indeed, uh, the chief of my village donated 15 acres of land for the ministry. But we, down the road, we bought some extra land, so we have about 52 acres of land that all these projects are on, on the site. Hallelujah. So we have this orphanage. We also started a nursing school. We train community health nurses. It's a two-year program community health nursing certificate, and we have a three-year community nursing diploma. We have three-year midwifery course, and just this year, we started a four-year degree program for nurses. We have a little over 700 students in the school. So with the school, the orphanage, and also with the uh, Community Health Nursing Training College. When school is in session every day, you have about a thousand people on the site. Hallelujah. God has been good. 
And we are grateful to you for your prayers and for your support. We are trying to build a hospital that has taken us a while, but I know it will be done. And the, 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 the main premise of the hospital is that the nurses that are being trained will also have a practical training at the hospital. And it also cater for about 25 communities in the area. So we thank God for the hospital that is being constructed to benefit the people. We also started a, a missionary residence that is also in construction. We want to build a place that will be decent when people come to visit. They will have a place to stay. You don't need to have stay in a hotel so many miles away from the village and then we'll bring you to the village and take you to the uh, a friend, uh, take you to the uh, hotel. So this place will be a missionary residence and when the hospital is done, if you have a doctor that has no place to stay, he can stay there as a transition as we find a permanent place for, for the doctor. Also, every year we do two seminars for all the pastors. We bring them from the villages all over and they stay on site. But we have no place to, to lay our heads. We use some of the classrooms. And the classrooms we have, it's not like the classrooms you have here. So it's a little something. So we hope that we'll be able to finish this project so that when the pastors come for the conference, they also have a place to stay and be able to apply themselves to the things that are being taught to the glory of God. Our God is good. The vision is large. But we serve a big God. Hallelujah. And we have great people that are behind us, moving us forward to the glory of our God. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We have a Bible school. Now we train our pastors there and church leaders. A couple years ago, a number of years ago, I was preaching at the first congregational church. Pastor Green lined me up to preach there. And as I was preaching there, they had just bought a new choir rose. They have the old choir rose. So I asked, Pastor, what are you going to do with the old choir rose? He said, well, I don't know. We'll probably talk about it and see what coming down. I said, I'll take them. So they gave me the old choir rose. I took it to Ghana. It has become our graduation gown. That's what we use, the old choir rose. And uh, it's fulfilling a purpose for the glory of God. We have some few pictures at the table, so you can just pass by and look at it. But we want to thank you so much for all your prayers and your support and for the work that is going on in Ghana, West Africa. Indeed, without your help, I don't think we'll be able to achieve what we have been able to achieve for the Lord. So we are grateful, grateful to the church, to the family, to you as a person, as a family, as a church, for standing with us over the years to the glory of God. I remember my, my name, Charles Strite. I remember him very well. He will always encourage me. He will always strengthen me. He said, Charles, we are behind you. Hallelujah. And there are a number of people from this church all of you has been a great blessing to me. And I thank you for your prayers and for your support. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm going to share a little bit from the Bible. And I won't be too long. You take all the time you want. We need a 12. I want to share a little bit from the word uh, Ecclesiastes 7 3, verse 1 to 11. But I will not read that one. You can read it at home. And also, 
Genesis chapter 8, verse 22. But I would like to read Genesis 8, verse 22. He says, while the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease. Amen. Amen. I want to share a little bit on the dawn of a new season. The dawn of a new season. A season is a period. A season also means a term. I look at the word season, it also implies the nature of impermanency, that nothing is permanent. Amen that things are constantly changing. A season is a phase in life or a phase of life. It also means stages in life. But there are so many seasons in the world. In our personal lives, there are good days and bad days. There are good times and bad times. There are some times everything is going on well. There are some times things are not going on too well. Even in our families, we see that happening. In business, we also see that happening. Sometimes some seasons are good. You have an everything Everything you're doing gets well. There are sometimes everything is bad. There are sometimes seasons that your health condition is not too bad, not too good. There are sometimes you are good, you are high up there, and you are encouraged and strengthened and empowered. There are sometimes you are happy. And there are sometimes we cry. There are sometimes. We enjoy life, and there are sometimes you say to yourself, it's better for me to be home. Hallelujah. But when we talk of seasons, in Africa we have only two seasons. We have the rainy season, and we have the dry season. Rain, and heat, and more heat. But in America, you have all the four seasons. You have the summer, you have the spring, you have winter, and you have the fall. Hallelujah. And that makes life a little interesting. You look up to. There are some seasons you look up to. There are some seasons you wish is not there. Amen. And I look up the word, what does winter stand for? What are the implications of winter. When I look up the word winter, it stands for sadness or heartbreaks or loneliness or sickness. It also represents waiting and struggles. Struggles. In winter, you know, you go to work, it's too cold out there. Go to work, you come home. Go to church, go home. You're not able to visit and do the things that you need to do, all you want to do, like being on the beach, enjoying yourself. Winter time, you can't do that. So it's cold. And so it can bring some sadness to you because you're not able to go out there and do the things that you want to do. And I also look at the word, what that spring stands for. And he showed me new beginnings. Spring stands for new beginnings or youthfulness or hope and also opportunities. For springtime is when all your flowers that are dead, they are now rising up again. The trees that the leaves fall and they are all coming up 
everything is springing up. There's uh, some youthfulness and all that. There is some joy coming up into your life. That is the springtime. So there is a summertime, there is a winter time, and there is a springtime in all of our lives. Hallelujah. And then I look up the word summer, and it represents passion or growth or young adulthood, signs of growth, abundance, destruction, and the need for protection. Amen. So summertime, you have a passion to go out, enjoy the season. You know, you go to the beach. If you have a boat, you go out there and you try to enjoy yourself and all that. But it can also be a distraction. The reason why it's a distraction is that summertime you want to go out every day or every weekend you want to go out and sometimes if you don't take time, it will distract you from going to church or doing what you're supposed to do in the house of God. So it can also be a distraction. But it's a joyful time. Everything is bubbling. And you are in your shorts and stuff like that. All the jackets are now. When I came here, I was wearing two jackets. <laughs> I had a first jacket, and then I have another jacket on. I remember when I first came to Canada, I wore two, two pants, and I wore my jacket. And I wore my other jackets on it. And then I go under the blanket and I'm so cold. One day my dean came to my room early in the morning, knocked at my door and opened the door and I was there. And I was, I was cold and I was under my, my uh, yeah, blanket. He said, Charles, are you cold? I said, yes, I am cold. He said, well, after, after lectures today, see me. He took me to the mall and bought me long jumps. <laughs> <laughs> and when I had long jumps, and I, I said, oh, this is what you do. That's why you're not cold. <laughs> Amen. I remember I was falling down too, too much from the dormitory to lecture room. It's a little far. You got to walk. And I didn't know uh, when it's winter and there's snow on the ground and it's icy. You should put something underneath your shoes so that you don't fall. And he, one day he was looking at the window and I was coming. I was falling down all the time. <laughs> he just laughed. I came, I came to the class. He finished the class. Let's go. And he went and bought something for me so I can put underneath my shoes <laughs> so I don't fall again. <laughs> Hallelujah. One day it was snowing and... Uh, I just opened the blinds in my room and I was watching. I was so happy to see it. I've never seen snow before. And two of my friends, a classmate, they came to my door and said, Charles, it's snowing. I said, yes. And they said, can we come in for coffee? We can all have coffee and then look at the snow and watch the snow. So I opened the door. They grabbed me and pulled me out and locked the door and took me into the snow, oh man, and they started beating me with snow, and I also did, and I broke the ice, hallelujah, amen, you know, I went skiing once, <laughs> they put all these gadgets on me, and I was holding my, what, what I don't know, I've forgotten the name, I was holding, I was trying to get my balance, I couldn't get my balance, each time I fall, each time I fall, and they were trying to help me, and I see all the kids, shum, shum, shum. I said, ah, why is that I can't do it? Then I look around, there was no black person there. <laughs> <laughs> so I look at them, I say, you see, black people don't ski. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Isn't God good? <laughs> yes. Oh, glory to God. These are things, you know, you never forget. They stay with you all your life. Amen. And so you have all the seasons of life. Seasons. Then you have a fall that shows change, reflection, 
maturity, success, achievement, and failures. Which means in life, there will be achievements and there will be failures. And when you something happens and you fail, that doesn't mean that's the end of your life. It's the beginning of great things to happen. Hallelujah. Amen. In Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1 to 11, he says, there's a time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to harvest. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build up. A time to cry and a time to laugh. We all cry, especially when you lose a loved one so dear to you. We shed tears. And then when there is success, we all laugh and enjoy life. Hallelujah. A time to grieve and a time to dance. A time to tear and a time to mend. So there is a time for everything. And I pray that it's a new dawn of a season that will come upon your life, your home, that will revolutionize our lives and change situations that we face in this life. That there will be a season that will be touching off our lives and there will be a season that will also help us to put the devil where it belongs. And there is a season that will bring joy to the church. That will bring a revival and restoration of the church's power and authority. Glory to God. There will be a peace, a season where there is peace in your life. There is joy. There is harmony. There is good health. An abundance of God's supply. New job opening. A new season now will touch your personal life. That God will open new doors for you. Let that be the dawn of a new season. That will open great doors of ministry for your life, for your home, for your family, for your children, your grandchildren, and great grandchildren. Hallelujah. Let there be a new season, new opportunities of doing things for the Lord. And also for the church, for the community, for our families, and our homes. In Jeremiah 29 verse 10, he says, For thus saith the Lord that after 70 years be accomplished in Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word toward you. I will cause you to return to this place. The word Babylon stands for evil. It also stands for dispersion. It's a metaphor for the words carnality and wickedness. It also stands for position to go through. It also stands for a time where everything is scattered. That's Babylon. Say, after 70 years, after you've gone through all this, I, the Lord, will visit you. And I will cause you to return to this place. Amen. To return to your original position. To return to your glory days. To return to refurbishment. To return to glory. To return to my presence. To return to my glory. To return to to my healing and deliverance, a miracle in the name of Jesus Christ. I will visit you. And I'm a candidate for visitation. And I want God to visit me. Hallelujah. First of all, to clear my throat. Second of all, to visit my body. And third, second, the third, to heal my, my eyes. Hallelujah. 
and also to bring a revival to the communities that I minister to. Not only the community, but also all the churches that are connected to World Alive Mission. Hallelujah. After 70 years be accomplished, I will visit you. I pray that God will visit you this morning. In the name of Jesus, he will visit you with his grace, with his mercy, with his power, with his glory, with his anointing, with his presence. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, visit us, O God. In the name of Jesus, make something new out of our lives. In Jesus' name. I pray that the Lord will visit us. Say, I will visit you and cause you to return to this place. Cause you to return to what you belong. Cause you to return to your glory days. Cause you to return to the power of God. And the presence of God. And the glory of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. There were healing and deliverance. Miracles and salvation. You know, sometimes we say to ourselves, the good old days. The good old days are the beginning of good new days. Praise the name of God. Let us not live in the past, but move in the forward. In Jesus' name, that God will visit us and cause us, O oh God, to accomplish great things for God. Both in our families, in our homes, and also in the church and the community. In Jesus' name. In Genesis 50, verse 23, it says, God will surely visit you. And he shall carry up my bones from here. That was the, the message from Joseph. When he was telling his brothers. He said I'm going. But God will visit you surely. And when you return. To Judah. Take my bones with you. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless us. Encourage us. And strengthen us. And build us up. And let's know. That God. It's in the healing business. And I pray those who are sick among us, may the Spirit of God move among you and touch your life. In the name of Jesus, receive your healing, receive your miracle, receive your salvation, receive your redemption and restoration. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let there be a new season when nothing stops us from moving forward. A new season when nothing stops us from accomplishing what God has us to do in the name of Jesus. A new season where we will move forward and put the devil where it belongs. Amen. Destroy the works of the enemy and the powers of darkness in Jesus' name. And all the time, Satan do not want us to accomplish what we want to accomplish. Or what God has called us to accomplish. He become a stumbling block. Even when you are doing something in the church and everything is going well. Somebody may say, yes, a word or a sentence. And that can cause a discouragement to your spirit. And you may stop doing what you usually like to do in the house of God. And I pray that you are not a victim of that. But we'll move forward and put the devil where he belongs. And you say to him, Satan, I know you are coming against me, but I know God is for me. And if Jesus is for me, the enemy cannot overcome your life. But the Bible says the thief comes to steal, to kill and to destroy. But I have come that you might have life and have it in abundance. Jesus has come that we might have life. And have it in abundance. That we shall move forward. No matter what we face in this life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. In Ezra chapter 4 we see. Chapter 4 verse 1 to 6. We see how the people began to build the house of God. And as they began to build the house of God. People of the land rose up. And they went to Zerubbabel. He said let us build with you. But we worship your God as you do worship your God. Hallelujah. And as Zerubbabel said, and the chief of the father said, we have nothing to do with you. We will build the house of God to his glory. And the Bible says the people of the land weakened their hands and frustrated them in building. And they wrote accusations against them. You know, anytime you are doing something for God, 
The enemy will come against you. He will come from the left. He will come from the south. He will come from the east. He will come from the west. He will even come from within. The house of God. He can come from your family. He can come from the community. Anytime you are doing something for God. The enemy always rises. And when he rises. All he wants to do is to bring discouragement to you. But that is the greatest weapon the enemy is using to discourage the people of God in worshiping and coming to the house of God. Hallelujah. And I pray that we are not discouraged by what accusations against us and what people say. Hallelujah. But we encourage ourselves in the Lord and say, no, <coughs> excuse me. No matter what I'm going through, I will still serve the Lord. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. And the Bible says in Ezra chapter 5, verse 1 and 2. It says, in the last verse of Ezra 4, it says, the people stopped the burden of the house of God. They stop burden. Anytime something comes against you and you stop. I pray that there will be the Joshua's who will write and say, the people are big, they cannot, we cannot face them, they overcome us. But the Joshua will rise and say, you can do it. We can make it happen. Hallelujah. And come and encourage us. In Ezra chapter 5, Verse 1 and 2. The Bible says, Then the prophet Haggai and Zechariah began to prophesy unto the people. And once you hear a good word, it encourages you to move forward. Be a career of positivity. Encouraging people. Strengthening people. Building people up. And then, and giving them new directions, say, we can do it. Hallelujah. There is nothing too hard before the Lord. Now I always tell my people, I said, you know, Africa is not poor, but we have bad governance. And that's why we are always poor. But let not that discourage you in doing the work of God. No matter what we face in this life, let's move forward. And preach the gospel. And train our people. To leave the worshiping of idols. And worship the true and only God. Hallelujah. The Bible says. As they prophesied unto the people. The people rose again. And they began to build the house of God. Hallelujah. I pray that there will be. Joshua among us. People among us. Who were always. Be careers of positivity who we'll encourage people and build people up and strengthen people to move forward to do the work of God. Hallelujah. God is our good, a good God. And with God, there's nothing you cannot do. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Amen. Amen. I pray that there will be a new season. A new season. That will encourage the church. That will encourage the people of the Lord. That will bring a revival to the church of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. That will bring strength. Amen. A new season. Let it be a new season in the house of God. Let it be a new season in my personal life. Let it be a new season in my family. Let it be a new season in the community. In the name of Jesus Christ. That will bring revival. That will bring restoration. That will bring encouragement. In the name of Jesus Christ. That will put the devil where it belongs. Under our feet. And destroy the works of the enemy. And move forward. And touch people for the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. I pray God will bless all of us. And strengthen us. Hallelujah. The last one I will talk about is a revival in the house of God. Amen. Joel chapter 2. Verse 23 to 25. I pray that this new season, the former rain will go and the latter rain will come. 
In the past, we have done a lot for the Lord. But in the present and the future, we will do great things for God. Hallelujah. We never give up. We keep going. We keep moving. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The latter rain that will bring restoration, revival, and visitation. The latter rain, you know, our former life, our own personal life, will receive a new season. Then the visitation of anything that will distract us from moving on into a new season. And then a new season that will bring a revival, a restoration to the house of God. Now when the doors of the church are open, we will rush into the house of God. We will kneel before God and we will continue to pray unto the Lord. We will seek his face. We will seek his presence. In the name of Jesus Christ, God will touch us. God will mold us. God will save us. God will transform us. I pray that God will touch all of us and revive us in Jesus' name. There is a coming revival and that revival will start with us first. Personally. Destroy the works of the enemy. And they will touch the church. And the church will continue to move forward to the glory of our God. May the Lord touch us. May the Lord touch you in the name of Jesus. And bring a new season to your life. In Jesus name. Bring a new hurt into your life. In Jesus name. And new directions and leadership into your life. In the name of Jesus. May the Lord touch all of us right now. In Jesus name. I pray for his presence. I pray for his glory. I pray for his power. I pray for his anointing. I pray for the glory of God. To overshadow us. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. The young men shall see visions. Young men shall put on their strength. Young ladies shall put on your strength. We shall march up forward and go into the highways and the byways and preach the gospel and bring our friends into the house of God, encouraging them to attend services. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. And all oh, the men will dream dreams and bring encouragement to the young people. Praise the name of the Lord. May the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord make his face shine upon us and give us peace in the name of Jesus. I pray for his glory and his power, his presence and his majesty in the name of Jesus. May he rest upon us. May he glorify himself in all of our lives. We give you praise and we give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Hallelujah. Paul wrote these words in Philippians. I have just preached on this. I want you to hear them again after that. I rejoice greatly in the Lord that at last you have renewed your concern for me. Indeed, you have been concerned, but you had no opportunity to show it. I am not saying this because I am in need, for I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need. And I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do everything through Him who gives me strength. Now I need you all to do me a favor. All of y'all close your eyes. You see darkness. You see no light. Right? Now open them. Today we have an opportunity. We are going to take up a second offering. We're going to do a whole lot more than that. For those of you who don't know, Charles is losing his eyesight. And that's no game. 
That's reality. He needs surgery. He needs to have his eyes worked on. And he's coming back here in, in a short period of time to do it. But the cost is great. There is a cost exceeding $5,000 to have both eyes worked on. And he's not going to pay for any of it. To those of you here, we're going to take up a second offering. If you need to make a check out, you make it out to the church. We're going to set up a fund. This goes for you on the other side of the screen. We're going to start raising money over the next little bit to put together the funds necessary to get your eyes fixed. Because would you want that to not be able to preach? So we need this. We need to take care of him. Charles and I have had many discussions, many conversations. We talk quite a bit. Maybe not necessarily in word, but we talk quite a bit in communication. And he gives everything first to make sure that the mission's done, but doesn't take enough care of himself. My parents sit down. And we're not going to have that. He needs that surgery over the next couple months. We're going to raise every nickel of it to take care of that. Can you say amen? amen? Do we want to call ushers up or do we just want to tell them that there's a plate back there? Uh, we thought we'd take up. All right. Uh, Bucker Wally, give him a hand. We're going to take up a little bit of an offering here. Give what you can when you can. Go ahead and start the front and work your ways back. If you can, the plates will be back there. Got to write a check, write it out along Meadow Church of Brethren. We're going to be setting up a fund over the next couple months to raise up the necessary amount to do this. And so you understand, Charles will be taking some of the cash home with him because that's easier to deal with in, in his situation for his own living expenses and to take care of him. But we are going to raise the money to fix his eyes. And before you start talking and start your foolishness up, I heard what you said, brother, about building that place that missionaries can come and stay. Yeah. It's too hot over there. <laughs> so don't start with me. I'm taking you with me. <laughs> now. I'll kill all the snakes before you get there. I ain't scared of them snakes. It's 130,000 degrees in the shade in December. Now then, I need everyone here up front now, please. Come in, get connected. Let's tie it together. don't have to come all the way up. You can connect to somebody down low. It all flows to the same place. Come on, Hunter. Don't be scared of him. He's not the one who bites. I do. <laughs> Father, Pray for that restoration to come to Charles. What he does for everybody else is beautiful and wonderful and loving and great. And we cannot begin to thank you enough. But now, Father, we need to all pray for Charles directly, for his safety, moving about this country, going back home for everything he's doing over there to push back the enemy. We pray, Father, for the restoration of his body, his soul, we pray that we will be able to fully take care of his eyesight through your glory, through your power, through your provision. Father, we pray for him, for the preachers, for the nurses, 
for everything from Word Alive Missionaries, from everything that's being done, we just ask that you continue to protect them and give them fullness and lift them up. But right here, right now, Father, it's all about Charles Nayani, our brother, whom we love. We pray for him mightily. Now in the saving power of our Lord Jesus Christ, all of his children said, Amen. Amen. As we get ready to close, I just continue to ask for your prayers upon Brother Charles and how thankful we are to have him. And may God watch over and keep each and every one of you. Oh. 
depart from here today, let us be reminded that there are those who walk out into the fields and byways and give everything and surrender everything. We keep our brother in prayer and we will work to support and bring wholeness to him. Thank you. Father, watch over and keep all of us now in the name of you, your Son, and the Holy Spirit forever and ever.